If I was to describe Tetsuo to someone in just a word, I think it would be original. It's just one of those movies where you can't think of anything else like it. The production was incredibly troubled. It was filmed over 18 months and was such a difficult shoot under intensely stressful conditions that the lead actor explained someone was leaving every week. By the end, the actors had to perform some of the production duties because there was no one else left. The director himself stated he considered burning the film's negatives because it was such a horrible experience. Most of the movie was filmed in the director's cramped apartment and yeah, you can feel how hellish the shoot must have been just lunge out of the screen at you. A lot of work, but clearly worth it as the movie went on to become the defining film of the Japanese cyberpunk movement. This is what you call a niche product. It's high concept, low budget, and very Japanese. A casual Western viewer is probably going to call it quits after about 10 minutes. It follows a salesman who hits a guy everyone knows as the metal fetishist with his car. After this, many unexplainable things happen in his life and metal just seems to consume everything around him. Here's a fun game, try saying the word metal fetishist three times fast. The metal fetishist is actually the director himself, Shinya Tsukamoto. Hey there everyone, Sean here, the guy from the video you're all watching. I just want to take a wee moment of your time to explain that throughout this series, you may detect a few times that I pronounce someone's name a smidge wrong. I really don't know what it is about this, I just seem to have this really bad luck with pronouncing names correctly. I called James McAvoy, oh god, it's happening again. I called James McAvoy, James McAvoy for six years before someone finally corrected me. I once, I was in a party a few years ago, walked in and with full confidence in a quiet room said, oh hey, you should put on that new song by Pavlova Faith. Technically, it's not an incredible looking film, but you feel the filmmaker's passion in every scene. The effects aren't realistic, but they're so inventive and fun. There's even a ton of stop motion effects mixed in, a technique the director used because it was all he could afford. The world is grimy, rusted, and absolutely consumed in metal. Its frames are just so packed with a ton of material to look at. It's such a busy movie. What it lacks in value, it more than makes up for in unmatched style. It's a bullet train of a movie. You're almost never given a breather. It just fires you through one over-the-top set piece to the next. Half the time, you feel you're in some sort of crazed fever dream. Sounds blare, the music can suddenly change completely out of tone to the previous scene, and the film fast cuts to bizarre angled shots constantly. The camera work is just so chaotic and scrambling, like you're running without reason through the film along with the protagonist as he and everyone around him contorts erratically. And as our hero succumbs more and more to his strange situation, his sanity also begins to break and the film only gets crazier. The music is heart palpitations in audio form. It's mostly just aggressive drumming and metal clanging together. Combined with the visuals, it makes you feel constantly like you're under anxiety. People's grunts and screams are really emphasised while actual dialogue is minimal, making the world seem more rabid and untamed. The audio is just so perfectly crafted to seethe into your brain and make a statement every time the scene switches. Call that a knife. It's a film that makes you uncomfortable, but in the best way that only a horror movie can. That shot of the rebar scraping the guy's teeth is permanently etched into my brain. The film at times feels like an experimental avant-garde film. It's just so strange, hyper-stylized, and ripe for examination. Sometimes it transcends horror and just becomes flat-out dark comedy. Where else will you see a woman fight off a man whose penis just turned into a giant drill? If you're a fan of weird, surreal films, you're going to be in heaven. But for everyone else, it's an hour of sheer madness and you've got to be buckled in for the ride if you're going to find any enjoyment in it. There was a sequel released a few years later titled The Body Hammer, which follows a guy out for revenge after his son is kidnapped and murdered by a gang. 
His body becomes more metal through anger and experimentation, but it doesn't hold a candle to the first entry's originality. The manic creative style is really lessened, and the near psychotic mayhem is toned down to tell a much more straightforward story. There's still some inventive effects and some cool imagery, but on the whole it just feels like the wish-ordered version of the first film. Then there was a third film released back in 2009, but it's diminishing returns, and follows a man out for revenge against people who killed his son in a hit and run. One thing I hate is the overuse of shaky cam. Yes, the original had flailing camera work that shook and warped, but you could always make out what was going on, and the audio highlighted the chaos. Here it just looks like a heavy metal music video. There's just a lack of imagination and filming styles to these sequels. In any case, the first film is still a hugely entertaining and unique experience. If you love the over the top and strange style, then you might get a kick out of the sequels. As for me, I'll just stick with the original.